Good morning and welcome. I'm the Reverend Graham Brownmiller, lead minister here at Jubilee United Church. Today I have assistance from John, Bev, and Andrew. Thank you for joining us, whomever you are, wherever you are. We're grateful that you've chosen to be with us this morning. As an act of faith and reconciliation, we recognize the story of indigenous peoples who have walked on this land for generations. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and their spirituality. We gather here on the shared ancestral and unceded lands of Hunkamina and Homer speaking peoples. We equally respect each of the nations who share territory here. We want to affirm you and your presence with us, truly hoping that you find a place for yourself. No matter how great or little you feel your faith is, no matter if it's your first time coming to this or any church, if you were raised here or it's the first time in a while, no matter what it is that you might think keeps you from connecting to the source of all being, we hope that you feel included in what we do. Our differences really do bring us together in stage of life, personality, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, language, skin color, culture, race, marital or economic status, your ability. All of the things that make us different are what God has created in us and God loves in each of us. In our diversity, we are called a family. In the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light, light beyond all of the things we imagine, more than the sun and sky, the energy and a light bulb, and even more than this flame on our candle. Light from which all light comes, that is the light which reminds us all of Christ's presence in our lives and in our time together. I got to say, just as I was talking about light, the lights in here flickered. It was very strange. We long, oh God, to live in a beautiful place such as you have created. We have dreamed of a room in your house where we can sing for joy to God alive. Birds of the air are blessed to live and sing in your creation, and we in whom you live are blessed. We come to this time of worship knowing, oh God, that you are present. Let us join you and let us pray. Oh God, even when the teaching is tough, you are with us, helping us, prodding us, guiding us. You love us with a tender love and gather the community in joy and sorrow to be together. Help us hear your word in this time and in our everyday lives. We pray to you. Amen. We're going to hear a story about the disciples, some of them who desert Jesus because it's hard. It's, uh, it's tough sometimes to be a Christian. Sometimes the scripture doesn't make sense or we have a different interpretation of others, but we study, we listen, we pray together, and we tell our story of faith. When we gather in worship, when we gather in Sunday school or youth group, that's part of the reason is because we know it matters. Trying to figure out what it means to be together, to tell the story, and to stick it out even when it's tough. Story can be tough sometimes. And no matter our age, no matter the stage of our faith development, no matter if we've been going to church our whole lives or if this is the first time or the first time in a long time, the story can be hard. And so we share that time and we share those stories and we know that we are in it together. So now let's hear those stories of our faith. Our first reading is from the Song of Solomon. Listen, look, listen, there's my lover. Do you see him coming? Vaulting the mountains, leaping the hills. My lover is like a gazelle, graceful, like a young stag, virile. Look at him there on tiptoe at the gate, all ears, all eyes, ready. My lover has arrived and he's speaking to me. Get up, my dear friend, fair and beautiful lover, come to me, look around you. Winter is over. Winter rains are over, gone. Spring flowers are in blossom all over. The whole world's choir and singing. Spring warblers are filling the forest with sweet strains. Lilacs are exuberantly purple and perfumed and cherry trees fragrant with blossom. Oh, get up, dear friend. My fair and beautiful lover, come to me. Come, my shy and modest dove. Leave your seclusion. 
come out in the open. And our psalm reading is 84. What a beautiful home, God. I've always longed to live in a place like this. I've always dreamed of a room in your house where I could sing for joy to God alive. Birds find nooks and crannies in your house. Sparrows and swallows make nests there. They lay their eggs and raise their young, singing their songs in the place where we worship. God, how blessed they are to live and sing there, and how blessed all those in whom you live, whose lives become roads you travel. They wind through lonesome valleys, come upon brooks, discover cool springs and pools brimming with rain. God traveled. These roads curve up the mountain and at last turn. Zion, God in full view. God, listen. O God of Jacob, open your ears. I'm praying. Look at our shields glistening in the sun, our faces shining with your gracious anointing. One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship, these thousands spent on Greek island beaches. I'd rather scrub floors in the house of my God than be honored as a guest in the palace of sin. All sunshine and sovereign is God, generous in gifts and glory, not scrimping with traveling companions. It's smooth sailing all the way with God. And reading from John chapter 6, verses 56 to 69. My flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. By eating my flesh and drinking my blood, you enter into me and I into you. In the same way that the fully alive God sent me here, and I live because of him. So the one who makes a meal of me lives because of me. This is the bread from heaven. Your ancestors ate bread and later died. Whoever eats this bread will live always. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by God. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you always wish, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of real life, eternal life. You've already committed our, we've already committed ourselves, confident you are the Holy One of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying through these ancient words of Scripture. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be graced by your wisdom and your love. Amen. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. I wonder if this might be the gospel in a nutshell. Sorry to Martin Luther, who believed that it was John 3.16, for God so loved the world that God gave their only son to whoever believed in him should have eternal life. You know, that one. But finding something difficult and then turning away from it, rather than sitting with it in difficulty or engaging with it, trying to understand it, that seems like it might actually be the one that encapsulates a lot of the stories. It's quite regularly much easier for us to identify with those crowds who misunderstand and question than with Jesus himself or with the original 12 who reign. 
what Jesus has been saying, what we've been hearing these past four weeks is indeed hard to listen to and to understand sometimes. These teachings are hard to hear, hard to comprehend, hard to believe. But as I said last week, who Jesus is, what we do together, it matters. It might be really easy to just write off those who gave up on Jesus as being too lazy or unfaithful to believe. They are, after all, disciples, those who had, in fact, believed in Jesus, those who had followed him and given up much to do so. But now, after all their waiting and watching and wondering and worrying, they've grown tired. They can no longer see clearly what it was about Jesus that attracted them to him in the first place. And so they leave. I wonder if you've ever felt like that. Have you ever wondered if you have believed in vain? Maybe during the middle of the night when you've watched and prayed at the bedside of a child or grandchild in the hospital, wondering why they're so sick. Or maybe in the early parts of the morning when you wake up alone and wonder why a spouse has left. Or maybe in the latter part of the afternoon while cooking supper and thinking about your family, so full of ill will toward each other, wondering why have things not turned out the way we hoped and will they ever? I think that if we are true to ourselves, we will admit that these times come pretty regularly in our lives. The times that we're looking for God, for some sense that there is a God. We can have such a hard time seeing God. We're tempted to conclude that the promises we trusted were empty. The faith we once held is misplaced. Perhaps we don't renounce God openly. We don't make the effort. We just don't make the extra effort to get to church or we reduce what we've been giving for offering or we're more reluctant to help others or we complain to each other about the small things that in the grand scheme of things don't really matter or assume someone else will do it because I've given my time or simply stop praying until in the end we end up just like the disciples in today's reading and maybe it's not you but you probably know people like this maybe your own children and grandchildren Friends that used to sit beside you in the pews who are no longer here. It's not pretty, I know, but it is real. I think it's a fairly accurate portrayal, portrait of disbelief with Jesus surrounded by folks who want to believe, who used to believe, who have been trying to believe, but they've gone through the motions too long and they've finally just given up. But I also think this story is a story of belief and of faith. Because even after all of those others have pulled away, Jesus asks the 12, will you also go away? Peter answers on their behalf, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. I want to ask Peter and the other disciples where they get their faith. What makes them different from all those who gave up on Jesus and went away? Those who give up on Jesus and go away. But I need to be clear, I don't think that those who leave are foolish or faithless unbelievers. I also don't think Peter and the others are faith giants, flawless in their commitment. It's not their brains or their ability or the status or even their faith. They just knew where to look. And they knew if they just hung in there, they would come to some deeper understanding. The disciples, they struggle, not sure that they can follow such a radical teacher who challenged them so much. Maybe Jesus is just testing them, unsure if at the end he'll have any friends left. Truth can be like that, pushing us to the limits of our trust. It will not let us up. Relationships are like that. Jesus asks, can you hang in there with me? You know, there's a gift in staying, right? A gift of wisdom. It's a gift of life that can't be taken from us. So we accept our fear. We befriend the mystery, we embrace the risk, and we hang in there. We love one who's hard to love, follow a wisdom that's hard to follow, practice a love that is sometimes terrifying. Much is at stake if we stay, but more if we leave. Peter and the others learn to confess that this world simply pulses with the presence and activity of its creator. 
in nature, but also in governments and family and in the work that you do and the benefits you receive from the work of others. In our gatherings as family and a family of faith, God continues to be present and active, creating and sustaining the whole of creation. But it's true, it's hard to see God in those places. When nature turns violent and our province is literally in flames, where government goes corrupt, when family is a place of discord and the church is one of division, when all the things we usually count on come up empty and we no longer know where to turn, then, then may we hear God calling us to return to the basics and armed with God's mighty words of forgiveness, acceptance, and life, we hang in, we stick it out. Peter recognizes the importance of relationship that they have developed with Jesus. He says to Jesus, we have experienced you, been in relationship with you. You are who you say you are, God in the flesh. God committed to relationship, God wanting to be in relationship. And we forget just how vulnerable relationships are that they are the places and spaces of being known and knowing of no escape. The author of the gospel seems unabashed about conveying the, conveying the difficult teachings, presenting them as if they are difficult by design. They're meant to provoke and challenge us, reshaping our typical ways of thinking about things, encouraging us to wrestle and ruminate and ultimately cross over into new territory of understanding. Is something difficult? That's the point. Let it shift your mind into a higher gear, more suited for heavenly things and the spirit that gives life. Jesus means to introduce us to deep hidden dimensions of reality, to stretch conventional words into unconventional directions, to speak in parables, to poetically prod and push and provoke, and in so doing, invites us to trust in him, not only as prophet and teacher, but as God incarnate, the logos made flesh, the pattern and source of life, real life, eternal life that begins here and now. Martin Luther is quoted as having said, although God is present in all creatures and I might find God in stone and fire or even in a rope, for certainly God is there yet not wishing that I see there apart from the word and thereby cast myself into the fire or the water or hang myself on the rope. God is present everywhere and does not wish for you to grope everywhere. Grope rather where the word is and there you will lay hold of God in the right way. I believe that it's normal to have doubt, to be confused, to be skeptical and to have some distrust in the life of faith. When the disciples whisper, this teaching is difficult, we can all relate. The mysteries are many along the ways of Christian discipleship and teachings like this one can come across as odd, inaccessible. But at the heart of most stories of the gospel, the stories of our faith is a reminder of the miraculous abundance of love and grace offered that lead us toward genuine, vibrant, courageous life, true life, real life. So yes, the teaching is hard, but we hang in there and together we address those stories of our faith and the stories of our lives. In community, we gather and tell the stories of joy and of sorrow, trusting in Jesus to be present and trusting that real life is here and now. May it be so in your life and in mine. Amen.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your abiding guidance. O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. Open our ears to hear your word and draw, draw us closer to you, that the whole world may be one with you as you are one with us in Jesus Christ. We offer prayers of love on behalf of creation, our fellow creation, cre creatures, our neighbors, and especially for Ralph, Anne, and Susie, all in recovery from injuries or surgery. We pray for Dorothy's, Jeffrey's brother-in-law, Bill, whose daughter, Cheryl, has just found out that she has stage four pancreatic cancer. And for Marie's family, Michelle and Greg, and their two premature babies, Madison and Olivia, in a Halifax hospital. And we pray for all those in care homes and for those having health issues at home and for their caregivers and all those finding themselves alone and need of friendship, food, or shelter. Pour out your strength and courage upon them and upon us, that we may continue to find ways to comfort and support them generously and faithfully. We offer up our prayers of courage, comfort, and peace for our country and its leaders, for our community and our minister and church helpers, for all those fleeing Afghanistan and all the poor souls in Haiti in devastating circumstances. And here at home, all those who are being affected by the hundreds of forest fires, either being evacuated or those who have lost their homes and their livelihood. God of mercy and healing, hear the cries of those in need and receive these our petitions for all who are troubled and in need. As he set his living bread before us, Jesus taught that we are to believe though difficult at times, in a beautiful heaven, life after death, and not be like those ancestors who ate the bread and died. O God, creator of the universe, as we are feasting around your table, may we be strengthened to continue the work to which your Son commissioned us, transforming us through your wisdom to manifest for others the mercy of our crucified and risen Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. There will be fellowship time uh, in breakout rooms following worship today when we finish. And this coming Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., we'll have one of our community check-in times. You're more than welcome to join uh, whatever the conversation ends up being. Just uh, September 12th is the date that we're hoping for to return to in-person worship here in the sanctuary as we continue to watch numbers in the province and listen to the Provincial Health Authority. We'll keep you up to date on whether or not that changes. Uh, Dave Ellis is working on the fellowship roster. Dorothy Jeffrey has been working on the congregational worship leadership schedule. Um, if you usually have participated and haven't heard anything yet, check in with them. If you haven't participated and would like to when we're back in person, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we're planning on being still online. And so, you know, even if you're not here, there's still opportunities for you to participate. The thrift shop is open and accepting donations. As you are able to bring things in, please do so. Uh, the thrift has been quite busy. People are enjoying it. And um, it's a good, good chance for people to reconnect too. This week, we celebrate anniversaries of Don and Gwen and Randolph and Todd. Welcome uh, 
celebrations to whatever you're doing and however you're celebrating together and know that your community holds you as you do that too. And though not a birthday, it is a birthday. Uh, Linda and Tom Ray welcomed a new granddaughter, Clementine, last Saturday. And so congratulations to grandma and grandpa and to mom and dad and Clementine. It's uh, just so exciting to welcome a new child into the family. Friends, for all that you offer in the world, to the church and to those around you, whether it be in your time, in your gifts, in your prayers, we're grateful. If you're able and wish to contribute to the financial life of Jubilee United Church, there are a variety of ways. You can drop off a check or mail a check into the church or someone will stop by and pick it up. You could join PAR, the pre-authorized remittance program. You could send an e-transfer to the office. We also recognize that some of you regularly worship other places and so they need your support. We're glad to provide this so that you can be with us and uh, continue to support the places where you come from for all that you offer in all the ways that you offer. We're grateful for your generosity. Let's pray. Where would we go, O oh God? You have the words of real life, of eternal life. We have committed ourselves to your way, your love, your story. Help us with these gifts to do good in the world, helping those who need our help. We bless these gifts to your holy name. Amen. Even when we find it difficult, we remember that God is with us, loving us, blessing us, and through us, blessing the world. So we go with the blessing of God who has created and is creating the love of Jesus, the word made flesh, and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. <laughs>